On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have Fred with the details on the South Shore Surf Classic and the Long Island Sound Blackfish Tournament. And Matt created a short video on how to clean and prepare blackfish. And reports from our correspondents from around the island. All here at the new fisherman.com. The fishing news is sponsored by these fine partners. I want to start off this week to remind you if you haven't already subscribed to the Fisherman's YouTube channel, do it now by clicking the subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post a new video on YouTube. As you may already know, News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin is a crazy fisherman like us. And this past week, he fished with Captain Brandon out of Deb's Inlet, and they landed this beautiful 48-inch bass on a live line bunker. The fish was revived and released safely. Rich also reports lots of bunker right outside the inlet with large bass and threshers in the same area. And they're being caught on the troll for the most part. Rich, how is the weekend weather looking? All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, I'm going to check the weekend forecast, see what we got going on. And it looks like it's going to be uh, kind of a weird weekend. We've got some big swells to contend with on Saturday and maybe some sodding a bit into Sunday. Water temps, you know, 60s here all throughout the island, so it's not too bad. Big swells. We have offshore Hurricane Epsilon moving north of Bermuda. So there's going to be 4 to 8, 8 to 12. It's a long wave kind of heave type of swell coming in. You got to watch the inlets and, of course, anywhere across the beach is going to have those big breakers coming in. So just be careful heading out early Saturday morning. There won't be much wind, but those big swells will be out there. And then they subside into Sunday, maybe 2 to 4, 4 to 8. But then we start to get a northeast breeze, a chop develops Sunday afternoon. So I think Saturday, probably a little calmer, but there will be those big waves coming in. Southwest, about 5, 10, 5 to 15 for Saturday. There's not much in the way of wind on Saturday. It's fishable. Just got to watch out low tide around the inlets. Watch for those breakers coming in. And then they subside a bit going into uh, Sunday. But the winds go northeast. There's a front coming in. It's going to get a little uh, choppier, similar to what we had last Sunday with that east-northeast breeze. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, high tide, just watch these. North shore early morning, south shore for the uh, early afternoon. And uh, temperatures about 70 on Saturday. Going to be kind of a warm day. And then the cooler day, chillier day, will be Sunday. Check the guru quickly and see our Saturday. There you go. You get a light southwest breeze across most areas, but also look at the waves and meters there. And that's about four to six feet, but it's also 13 seconds. That's a swell there. On Sunday, you know, it's a northeast breeze, a little choppier. The, you know, the, the swells drop a little bit, but uh, you're going to have more, more of a breeze coming in, more of a chop. But overall, you know, I think Saturday will be okay. Just be very careful, of course, around the inlets. There'll be those big swells coming in, but the wind won't be too bad. That's a weekend forecast. Thanks, Tim. Back to you. Remember, be sure to check out News 12 for the latest weather before heading out on the water. Let's start off this week with Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galafaro with some tournament and fishing news. Hey, Tim. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've had any events to report on. But coming up this weekend, we've got the South Shore Classic, the surf tournament. That's going to run from Friday noon to Sunday noon based out of Captree. Captree Bait and Tackle, you can sign up there. It's a $15 entry fee. Sign up anytime before then, and you can sign up until 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Just can't wait to fish in until then. Um, there's not going to be any, uh, any award ceremony. There'll be a drive-by to pick up your goodie bag for the first 100 people that come by on Sunday, and that'll be at noon. Uh, first place bluefish and first place striped bass, $750. Striped bass will be based on the largest fish within the slot, between 28 and 35 inches. There's also a blackfish tournament <laughs> this weekend. We've got the Long Island Sound Blackfish Tourney. That's this Saturday, and the entry fee there is $60 per angler, and that's going to benefit cerebral palsy of Long Island. There's cash prizes for the 14 largest TOG, and that'll all be divided up based on the entries. Uh, you can enter online at Long Island Sound, or L.I. Sound, blackfishtournament.com. And uh, again, the entry fee is $60 for that. The boundaries are Whitestone Bridge to Orient Point, so anywhere basically in Long Island Sound is eligible. And the weather's looking pretty good for the weekend, so it should be, should be a good tournament. On the fishing front, black fishing's off to a great start. I'm hearing really good reports from all around the island, not just in boats, even guys fishing from shore, the South Shore Inlets. Uh, stretches of the North Fork beaches, North Shore beaches. Uh, just, again, blackfish seem to be making a 
pretty decent comeback. And uh, I'm hearing a lot of keepers too, and a lot of fish to four or five pounds. Bass fishing can't get any better in Montauk, at least, and, and around other parts of the island as well. A um, couple of captains I spoke to, uh, Savio Mizzi and Sal Trapani, Sal's from the Moon Dance charter book. Uh, they're just calling it like old times. Blitzes all over the place, a lot of fish up on top, and um, a lot of small fish, but a lot of fish also falling into the slot category. Seems like a lot of those really big fish have moved on. Uh, down along the south shore, but you can't want for more action than what they have right now out there. A lot of it in the boats is diamond jigging on the beach. A lot of the fish are being caught on bucktails. So, great weekend to get out, do some fishing, and, uh, and catch them up. Tim, back to you. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters, who's reporting this week from the North Fork. Hello, Tim. Well, it's been an interesting week. I did get out in the surf a little bit. Uh, I haven't had any luck, but uh, Bluefish Joe has called in. He's saying he's doing good. As soon as the first light hits the water, it's over. So get out there early. Get out in the morning. Uh, as far as uh, we ran a trip here up onto uh, North Shore, North Fork Beach. Uh, it really was interesting. We had a good time. Not a lot of fish caught, a few stripers and uh, some blackfish, believe it or not. But uh, it is it has been pretty slow up here, but I think it's the tide. You know, I don't really know the best tide to go up here, uh, but I'm going to stay to dark and see what happens. Maybe I'll get something. Uh, as far as uh, if you really want to get some fish, consider taking a guide. Captain Tim O'Rourke out in Montauk, man, he's still talking about how good the bass fishing is. Uh, the obbies are slowing down, but the bass fishing is good. On the North Shore, Dave Flanagan, I called in him because I wanted to book a trip. I know nothing about black fishing, and he's going to take me out and teach me. And he's been doing mixed bag trips, blackfish and also albacore in his neighborhood. So he's been doing very good. Great guy. Give him a call. So until next week, tight lines, everybody. Also from the North Fork, we have Sebastian Head. Thanks, Tim. The uh, fishing on the North Fork has been fantastic recently. The, uh, the fall run is in full swing. It doesn't get much better than this. Uh, we came across a great school of striped bass. There's been a lot of schoolies around, but finding the bigger ones has been a little bit tougher. Uh, we were able to find a nice school of kind of 30 to 40 pound fish. Um, and here's a video of us releasing a 35 pound cow to keep breeding in our area. Um, the false albacore bite has really picked up. I know it was off to a slow start. They were a few weeks late, but, um, they're finally back in their local haunts. They've been off of Montauk for a while and spotty around, but they seem to be a little bit thicker than they have been, um, off of Orient and even down some of the sound beaches. Um, the tog fishing, the blackfish is off to a great start. I know the, the bays have been kind of lighting up as of recently. Guys have had their shot at the fish there and the sound has been solid since opening day. Um, they're still very shallow. Anywhere from kind of 15 to 30 feet has really been doing it. Um, they haven't moved deep quite yet. But um, now's the time to go fishing. We only have about a month left of great fishing, so get after it while you can and tight lines, guys. Back to you, Tim. From Montauk, we have Captain Timothy O'Rourke. Thanks, Tim. Well, greetings from Montauk. Another spectacular week out here. Uh, the fishing is really as to be expected, getting very good. Um, as everybody knows, the opening of Blackfish happened this week. We've had great reports on the Blackfish front. Uh, Polly Bruno from the Elizabeth, he's been out um, putting a lot of nice quality Blackfish onto the dock. Same thing with the party boats. Um, great opportunity to come out and get a mixed bag of fish in. The Viking and the Miss Montauk have all been Fishing south of Block Island, everything from sea bass, blackfish, and some codfish mixed in. Speaking of codfish, um, Ed and Rich here in Montauk, they went south of Montauk the other day on Sunday. Um, they did very good on the cod grounds. Unfortunately, the weather forecast was a lot of southeast wind, and they ended up breaking off more cod than they actually brought back to the dock. As far as uh, fly fishing, light tackle, surf casting here in Montauk, everything's going very well. Uh, plenty of bass in the mix. The fish are getting bigger. We're seeing plenty of keeper size to anywhere up to 30 inch fish, 32 inch fish in the surf and uh, off the boats on the fly and light tackle. 
But the highlight of the week was uh, Clayton. He uh, was offshore, deep drop sword fishing. This is a technique he's been perfecting for the last couple weeks. And I saw him on Tuesday, and he was lucky enough to have bagged three swordfish upwards to around 200 pounds. There's some really nice uh, pictures of Clayton swordfish. Congratulations, Clayton. All your hard work on deep drop and swordfish from 1,200 to 1,700 feet is starting to pay off. Steigercraft builds boats by the same people that fish our waters. That's why serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you. The last few weeks, you've seen Long Island Managing Editor Matthew Broderick talk about black fishing from the shore. Here he is now cleaning and preparing tug for the table. Matt? Being a fisherman, I like to cook what I catch sometimes. Blackfish are one of my favorite eating fish. Take a look at this filet video that I put together for you guys. One of the most important parts about uh, filleting fish is having a very sharp knife. It's one of the most important tools to have. Uh, after every fish, usually I typically like to sharpen my knife. So with this blackfish, I'll start off by um, getting an angle where I can make an easy cut. First, I make my first cut like this, okay, going down the uh, side of the fish. Next I'll follow the spine like this, going very slowly not to mess it up, all the way down the whole length of the fish. I'll come out by the tail and pop it out. After this I'll slice along the spine. This is the part that um, comes in handy having a, a sharp knife. Follow the spine all the way down, peeling back that skin as I go. Just keep going. You don't want to miss any meat. These are very good eating fish. Very slowly. This is the uh, one of the important parts to filleting uh, successfully. There's some pin bones up toward the head. I just slice right through those. As I get to the end, I'll just slice off the fillet like this. Okay, easy. Okay, so once I'm done with that, I'll take the fillet with the skin on it, make a nice slice going toward me. Then I'll go to the other angle, having my knife at a, at a certain angle, just so it peels that, that meat off the skin, just like this. Wiggle the uh, skin back and forth. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everyone. Really good fishing going on in between Shinnecock and Mauritius now. The beach, on the boats, uh, the, the bass are really on the chew. Uh, offshore correspondent Tony Gatto's nephew, Andrew Goldblatt, had a real nice slot fish last week on, a, I believe it's a Ron Z. Um, you know, it gets a little frustrating as a surf caster when you're looking out and you're seeing 20, 30 boats and uh, just a ton of birds. So we've gotten into them off the beach, though, as well. Uh, the beaches are kind of, all of them are, are lighting up at random times. It does seem to be the end of outgoing is the, is the tide where the chew's on a little bit better. Uh, and the, the beach is closer to the inlet, obviously. But the ones in between have had fish. Uh, a little bit on the smaller side, the bigger fish do seem to congregate, obviously, near those inlets. A uh, buddy of mine, Derek, got his personal best last week. Uh, 47 inches, 20-something girth on it so when you do the math it's like a 45 pound fish which is great uh, obviously release like almost all the the uh his fish and the rest of the guys from bass holes and most of us that are surf casting here releasing uh, the fish last year we had a ton of schoolies in the lip and it would be like every other cast on sandy limitators and small bucktails well we don't have that these fish have been a little bit better size on sunday i had uh, about an hour and a half going into sunset uh, two slot fish and a couple of schoolies on a combo of diamond jigs, and white one and a half ounce bucktail with a fat cow jig strip on it. Um, all that seems to be working. You know, the needle fish, some surface stuff. We had a couple of really calm Friday, Saturdays with the uh, northwest wind, really calm. I know a few people got some pretty nice surface action on uh, the pencil poppers and, and bottles, bottle poppers as well. Uh, blackfish bite's been pretty good. Good number of keepers coming in off the wrecks and the, and the reefs. Nothing's really fished out yet a week into it. Um, also, you can go back into our YouTube, see Matthew Broderick's video on targeting blackfish from shore. Been some catches off the west side of Shinnecock. 
as well as mariches. Um, a lot more shorts than keepers, but just uh, getting blackfish from the shore is pretty cool. So uh, definitely worth flipping the rocks, get your Asian crabs, and get after them. So this weekend looks good. Uh, there are some sea bass around also. Uh, it seems to be a little bit further offshore, um, but you know, if, if the uh, ocean cooperates, get out there and a uh, whole bunch of life and definitely hit the beach. Have a great weekend, everyone. Catch them up. I'll talk to you next week. Mark McGowan of Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle has this week's North Shore Report. Hey, I got to tell you, this week is nonstop action. There's nothing that you can say that's bad. I mean, the fish, the blackfish, the sea bass, jigging striped bass, jigging bluefish, fishing from the surf. I mean, it's everywhere, and it's all over the island. As far as the North Port goes, all the way from uh, Smithtown Reef, Crane's Neck, right down to uh, Cold Spring Harbor, nothing but smiles. I got to tell you, when you can get out in between the wind, a lot of people you can focus in the morning. It seems to have better winds than in the afternoon, but the past few days have been just uh, absolutely Absolutely dynamic so it's green crabs Asian crabs it doesn't really matter jigging using weights whatever your style there's a lot of fish in the 15 to 28 30 foot range and that makes for just awesome black fishing and there's nothing like black fishing at this time of the year that's what we wait for all season long up here on the North Shore it's a heavy bite over in Connecticut and it's really fantastic over there too we've got Benita We've got uh, beautiful bluefish, and if you're a surf caster, by all means, work the North Shore, the South Shore, really keep your ears open, get up for that daytime break, that daytime bite, you know, the magic hour as the sun goes down. There's really been fantastic fish, as well as night fishing, too. But if you're just getting into the sport and you feel more comfortable fishing in the daytime, this is the time to get out, because this is the time for daytime fishing. And I think it's gonna go right through to Thanksgiving, and it's just gonna be dynamite loads and loads of bait loads of peanut bunker adult peanut bunker uh well i guess there's no such thing as adult peanut bunker is there but uh you know adult bunker peanut bunker there's bay anchovies uh mullet are moving there's just so many things that these larger fish can target as well as the small one the point is get out there enjoy your life have a great time remember be courteous to others because this time of the year some of these beaches can get packed up and uh when the bite is on sometimes uh we forget about uh just common decency you know courteousness and uh remember that when you're in the parking lot shake some hands get to the beach lend a helping hand go back to the parking lot share coffee and good stories that's what fishing's all about and it brings it to your daily life until next week i bid you peace and tight lines with our offshore report let's check in with captain tony gatto thanks tim with not many fishable days this week reports are slim some inshore threshers have been taken um, and found harassing the bunker pods. From the boats that did go, I heard the yellow fin bite that was by the triple wrecks has pushed a little closer to the Hudson, but it is still going on. The Hudson out in the deep saw many swordfish taken again. Dan Coppola went two for four. And the Pragas were also at it again. They went one for two, unfortunately losing a real nice one but they made up for it with tile fish and some slob yellowfin. If you make it out, be safe and drop me a line. Back to you, Tim. Hey everybody, Matt Broderick from the Fisherman Magazine here. I'm here to tell you that the first annual Long Island Sound Black Fishing Tournament is coming up Saturday, October 24th. The tournament is being held to benefit the UCP of Long Island. For more information on this tournament, you can visit lisoundblackfishtournament.com. Matt just let me know that due to the overwhelming response, the sign-up for the Long Island Blackfish Tournament has been extended to Friday, October 23rd, 5 p.m. From the Fire Island area and the Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey, Tim. Fire Island report. Lots of striped bass around. Uh, fishing's been excellent. A lot of fish in the slot size, a lot of shorts, and some big fish. Uh, primarily in the ocean, the bigger fish are coming from and uh, on bunker pods and some mediums and, and big fish on jigs as well. You know, the party boats have been hitting it pretty hard and uh, some days it's kind of funny. Uh, some days it'll be a good bite in the morning, some days it'll be a good bite in the afternoon. 
but it's not at the point yet where it's a good bite all day long. So you really kind of have to look around and offshore search for the bird action, look for the pods. And then on the inshore grounds, uh, it's a matter of what you're going to put on the hook. You know, I'm catching on bait, I'm catching on plugs, uh, both inshore and offshore. So primarily striped bass right now on the menu and black fishing is also excellent. Uh, the Robert Moses Bridge columns, uh, they're all producing fish and any of the, uh, the reef, the Kismet Reef, a uh, number of different places you can go, but it's got to be near the structure. So fishing's pretty good right now on Fire Island, uh, around the Fire Island Inlet area, Tim. And I think it's going to be a good weekend. Weather looks pretty good. So talk to you next week, man. Be good. Bye-bye. After the fall run is over and it's time to put the boat away for the winter, Marine Mate of Lindenhurst has everything you need to decommission your boat. And their knowledgeable staff is there to guide you along the way. Marine Mate in Lindenhurst. From Seaford, we have Roger Boodoo. Hey, Tim. Hey, anglers. How's it going? Reporting for the Jones Beach, Jones Bay, Jones Inlet area. And um, in regards to striped bass, let's start off with the stripers. Um, it's been a tough pick in our area. For some reason, in the middle, it's, it's just a little slow right now. And uh, even by Fire Island, uh, you know, a lot of guys are saying they're still a little further east. And inversely, um, they're still a little west of Debs. So the middle just seems to be a little slow right now in terms of trolling and um, chumming by the bridges. But there are fish being caught. It's just, uh, you know, far and few between and um you know it's pretty sporadic but guys are catching them uh you know depending on the time of day closer towards dawn or dusk is always going to be better and also two guys if you're having a moving tide whether it's outgoing and ingoing i'm personally an outgoing tide type of guy i've always had uh, uh you know a better bite myself doing that and a lot of guys are drifting eels by the inlet at night but i haven't really seen any guys picking fish up or i haven't heard any productivity about that I did, however, hear that there are a lot of blackfish being caught by the McAllister and the AB reef right now. And obviously, uh, guys are using green cra green crabs and clams to catch them on. So if you're looking for blackfish, definitely head outside. Uh, I haven't really heard about them being uh, picked up by the bridge, but I did see a lot of guys um, fishing the bridges, the Meadowbrook, the Wantaw, and um, the Loop Parkway Bridge for blackfish. I just haven't heard any good reports. But, um, you know, as far as striped bass goes, guys, you know, you, you, you got to give it a good effort. If you could find a school of uh, bunker outside where there's not really a lot of boats crossing in and out, you might do all right. Um, but I did hear that they're closer inside, 30 feet or less. They're not really in the deeper water as yet in our area. If you are going to make an effort, uh, that's where you're going to want to be. Again, moving tide, time of day also counts. So get out there, guys. Give it your best shot. And that's all we have to report for this week. Sorry we don't have anything better. From Oceanside. We have Captain Joey Leggio. Hey Tim, what's going on? Report out of Deb's Inlet, uh, Reynolds Channel area. First, I'm going to start with actually a report that's a little bit more to the east in the Jones Inlet area. My uh, buddy Chris was out there, snagged the bunker. He had a beautiful bass. Uh, the fish was estimated at probably about 40 pounds and uh, safely released. The reason why I'm giving that report is that it's showing that those fish that were in the Fire Island area are now making their way to our area towards the west. With that being said, I took out Carolyn the other day trolling and we found a huge body of fish. I don't know if I have a picture of the marks. I'll try to find one for you, but I'm talking piles of bass. We were trolling over and we had nine hookups. Uh, that was yesterday on the stripers. So the bass have now moved into the Debs Inlet area. So guys, it's time to get out there. Those fish are here. Also with that being said, the blackfish are here. The reefs are fully loaded with fish. I had one trip out, I believe it was Sunday, when it was really rough weather. Uh, we were out there, we get our, <laughs> get our butts handed to us basically. And, uh, but the fishing was good, there was a lot of life, but the size wasn't there. But the guys managed eight keepers with fish going, uh, the biggest one was only 17 and a quarter inches. So again, keepers, 16 to 17 and a quarter, but not those jumbles that we love to catch. Um, the hot bait, of course, was the jig as always. For some reason, the jig is always going to catch more fish than the regular, you know, single hook rig. Also, guys, while you're out there trolling, the bycatch these days has been the thresher sharks. There's been a tremendous amount of these thresher sharks roaming the exact same waters that the bass saw. So when you're trolling, don't be shocked if you hooked up with one of these thresher sharks. Uh, pictured is Timmy of the margarita with a 228 pounder i believe it was he caught the other day uh these fish what they do is they come up their mechanism of attack is they swing back and they use their tail to strike the bunker and uh that's causing them to get snagged up in these bunker spoons you're more or less fighting these fish backwards the whole time but uh there's a lot of excitement and people are getting spooled other people are landing these sharks and they could be anything from a 30 pounder to a 500 pounder you never know what you're going to get 
when it comes to these thresher sharks. So it's another little bonus while you're out there. Uh, if you do harvest one of these threshers, make sure you have that permit. You need that HMS permit. If you get caught with one at the dock hanging, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So please make sure you have those permits. The, the hot lure for these bass has been the mojos and the, the bunker spoons, and the fish are hitting both. It doesn't matter what it is, what color it was. We were catching them on both mojos, green or white. We were catching them on the spoons. Doesn't matter, green, white, multicolor, whatever. I tried out the new bronze one by Tony Maja. Pretty hot new color he had. Um, but the thing is, though, you're fighting these fish for a while. These fish are coming up exhausted. So really take that time to release one, hold them, swim them. Another thing I like to do is put the boat in gear, swim them for a couple minutes and let them go. This video is Carolyn's bass. We're releasing, and you can see the fish swims off perfectly. Uh, other than that, that's my reports. Get out there, fish. Again, bass are there, blackfish are there. Full run is in full swing, and uh, get out there and catch some beautiful fish. Talk to you all soon. Kale's Family Boating Center is ready to get you out on the water. Check out a Sea Pro powered by Suzuki. New models are in stock now, but they may not last. Visit kalesfamilyboating.com for more information. Let's check in with Toby Lipinski on the latest from the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest. Toby? I'm going to start things off this week with an update on the Coastal Kayak Clash. Now, as I'm sure you're already aware, but hey, just in case you missed uh, the details on it, this year the Fisherman Magazine launched our first ever kayak-only fishing tournament, the Coastal Kayak Clash. Now, since back on May 1st, Fisherman Magazine subscribers have been fishing the waters from New England all the way down through the Mid-Atlantic from a variety of different kayaks with the hopes of winning the grand prize kayak that we're giving away, which is a brand new Old Town Sportsman Series Autopilot 136, as well as some really awesome other prizes from the guys at Yak Lights, Humminbird, um, Malone Auto Racks, Penn, Yak Attack, Fenwick, and more. You can get all the details on the tournament, uh, sign up, register, what have you, right now at thefisherman.com. But as far as entries, um, this week it was all about blackfish. That's why I'm out here on the water, and that's what we had coming in for these submissions. We got a bunch of blackfish updates coming in. Um, Todd category got a big of a shakeup, which uh, adjusted the overall leaderboard a little bit. Um, so as to those blackfish ed, uh, entries, New England angler Scott Schneider shot up the standings by submitting several upgrades this week. Um, he came in with a 21 inch fish, which he first bested with a 23 and 3 quarter inch fish on Saturday, to which he followed it up on Sunday with an even larger fish of 24 and a quarter inches. Uh, this put Scott in first place for the time being in the Blackfish Division. And we also had received an entry from overall leader here from New England, Chris Neves. He entered a blackfish of his own, measuring a solid 21 and a half inches, which is good for third place in the species category, and puts him at 11 points overall. A little bit ahead of New Jersey subscriber Bob Wagner with nine points, and then wrapping up the top three, fighting it out for that brand new kayak is New England angler Justin Oser, who sits in third place with five points. But you know, it's not just about blackfish right now, which you need to be hunting from your kayak as the October fish of the month species is bluefish. Now, what that means is the largest bluefish entered by a registered participant of the Coastal Kayak Clash this month will receive a $100 gift certificate to yakattack.com. Uh, now, just so you know, we actually haven't received any bluefish entries this month, so it is wide open. So, I mean, technically you could enter a snapper blue at this point and be uh, in the running. Um, so you, those blackfish anglers out there might be well advised to keep a rod rigged and ready in case some bluefish pop up, because uh, it only takes one fish right now to get that fish of the month. And this is the one opportunity throughout the season that if your entry is not going to make the top three on the leaderboard, that you should still submit it for the fish of the month consideration. Again, check out thefisherman.com for complete details on the Coastal Kayak Clash, and good luck to everybody out there. Big swells this weekend, so be very careful around the inlets or play it safe and stick to the bays and the Long Island Sound. Catch them up, and I'll see you right here next week at the all-new fisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.